from New Hanover County Schools Television, powered by students. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news. I'm Vanessa Bergman. And I'm Susanna Heron. Topping our newscast, Student Advisory Council meets for the final time of the year, Congressman David Rouser speaks to Hoggard students, and State Science Olympiad winners are announced. Our top story this week, Superintendent Dr. Tim Markley met with the Student Advisory Council for the final time this school year. Over the course of the year, the group has given input and insight to the Board of Education and the Superintendent. Here's the full report. Each quarter of the school year, Superintendent Dr. Markley and members of the Board of Education meet with students from all the high schools who made up the Student Advisory Board. At each meeting, the students received a presentation from a senior staff member and discussed their perspective on issues. They also had one meeting as a group at each of the high schools, allowing a more focused look at the different problems at each school. I think the biggest thing I got from this was definitely listening on what goes on outside of what we don't hear every day. I learned that um, more specifically my school is going to go further on into maybe finding a building for our school and so I didn't necessarily know that. The student advisory meeting were a great way for those making decisions about the school system to hear directly and candidly from the students who are often the most affected by those decisions. A wide range of discussions occurred throughout the year such as redistricting and school overcrowding. This year, safety was also a major focus and both the student and school system perspectives were discussed in detail. The real benefit of the Student Advisory Council is the opportunity it gives for board members and administrators to speak directly with the students in the schools. Um, we saw the expansion. Last year we added Mosley to that for athletics. This year we've added our specialty high schools. To, we're going to put that policy in place. Uh, you heard a lot of conversation about safety, um, the conversations around uh, what we're going to do at Isaac Bear, possibly getting their own building. That's part of this. Also, it's a great piece for, the, for our board members to interact with students and get a different voice. Uh, even if there's no policy decision that comes out, it's always a great conversation and helps them as they're, as they're forming policies. The Student Advisory Council was a major success this year. It helped provide a new perspective to school system decision makers and allowed students an outlet to share ideas and voice concerns. Superintendent Markley plans to resume the council next school year and looks forward to its continued success. Reporting for your school news, this is Vanessa Bergman. The Board of Education held a special celebration in honor of the teachers who received their National Board Certification this year. 34 teachers achieved certification for the first time this year and New Hanover County Schools now has 298 National Board Certified. At the celebration, the teachers were treated to cupcakes and other delicious snacks. They also had a chance to chat with Board of Education members and school system administration. These teachers achieved certification through a rigorous performance-based assessment which took between one and three years to complete. It measured what accomplished teachers and counselors should know and be able to do. After the reception, the 34 teachers, along with the seven teachers who renewed their certification, were recognized at the Board of Education meeting. Each teacher received a plaque along with cheers from the audience. National Board certification is the highest credential in the teaching profession and participation in is voluntary. Congratulations to all of the New Hanover County Schools new National Board certified teachers and to those who have successfully renewed their certification. With primary elections on everybody's mind, the U.S. government and politics and civic students at Hoggard had the opportunity to listen and t to speakers who either hold an office or are seeking election. After a visit from Dr. Kyle Horton last month, Ms. Allman and the Viking students welcomed Congressman David Rouser to speak about his career in politics thus far. Congressman Rouser started his talk with how he got started. He told the story about his time as undergrad at NC State, where he had a roommate who grew up behind the Iron Curtain. He talked about how this led to his interest in government and a career in government. Students also learned of Rouser's earlier political accomplishments working with Jesse Helsman and how it helped him to get to where he is today. He then spoke with the students about the process and difficulties legislators face trying to get a bill passed. He explained the process and discussed some of the challenges. Congressman Rouser spent his final 15 minutes with the students, taking questions ranging from the federal budget and gerrymandering, as well as what he believes are some of the disadvantages of a career in politics. Upon filing out of the room after the bell rang, Congressman Rouser shook hands with many of his future constituents. It was a great learning experience for the young students who may be looking to a career in government and politics in the years to come. 
Students from across North Carolina travel to the campus of NC State University to compete in the State Science Olympiad competition. Many teams place in the top five in their event, and with the list is YSN reporter Johan Yellow. Founded in 1984, Science Olympiad is one of the premier science competitions in the nation that challenges students in the areas of science, math, technology, and engineering. New Hanover County Schools teams were part of roughly 100 middle and high school teams that competed at the state competition, as well as the 60 other schools that qualified for individual events. First through 10th place winners were recognized at the event and medals were awarded to participants in each area. Here are the teams from New Hanover County who placed first through fifth in the competition. From Hoggard High School, two teams placed fourth in two different events. They were the teams of Daniel Chang and John Potet competing in hovercraft, and the teams of Daniel Livengood and Zeon Pans competing in dynamic planet. Overall, the Hoggard High School team placed sixth out of 51 teams. At Roland Grice Middle School, taking first place in Crime Busters were Justin Gao and Sartek Mishra. Benin and Long and Sayer Komen Edom took fourth in the meteorology event. Lastly, from Roland Grice was fifth place team of Sam Schneider and Nolan Savard competing in Battery Buggy. From Eugene Ashley High School, Savannah Kennedy and Grayson Harris took second place in Aerial Scramble. From Isaac Bearer Early College High School, taking second place in Mousetrap Vehicle were Tommy Esposito and Ben Ladder. Sophia Miller and Zane Dash took third place in Dynamic Planet, while Grayson Seister and Ben Ladder took first place in Aerial Scramble, earning each of them a $2,500 scholarship to North Carolina State University. Taking second place in the Stuck on Science event were Johnny Morales and Bailey Bordeaux. The last team from Isaac Bear included Chloe Jones and Cole Woodson, who took fourth place in paper science. From EA Laney High School, the team of Nick Karras and Natalie Kelmer took fifth place in Dynamic Planet. Natalie Kelmer also took fourth place in Rocks and Minerals event with her teammate Amy Leister. In Mystery Design, Allison Carpenter and Ben Akuri won third place, while Jade Taylor took fifth place in Paper Science. Priyanka Veraduvu and Cody Curran took first place in Mousetrap Vehicle, winning each of them a $2,500 scholarship to North Carolina State University. The entire team also took home the Spirit Award. From Murray Middle School, taking third place in Right Stuff were Katie Barnello and Mike Izzo. The team of Katie Barnello and Mike Izzo also won second place in Aerial Scramble. In Stuck on Science, Katherine Johnson and Tori Green took the fourth place spot. And from Noble Middle School, Cooper Hydali and Lindsay Nepper took third place in Herpetology. Congratulations to all this year's winners at the State Science Olympiad. Reporting for your school news, this is Johan Yellow. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Welcome back to your school news. I'm Susanna Heron. Noble Middle School is honored to host New York Times bestselling author Alan Gratz at their school for an entire day of excitement. The author gave in-depth talks to the students and even had a book signing. YSN reporter Mary Hull has the full report. Nothing could have inspired children to read more than a special visit from New York Times bestselling author Alan Gratz. He visited hundreds of schools across the nation and the world and the students at Noble Middle School were grateful to have him to stop by. His books were geared toward middle school ages, and many students have real connections to his books. He is best known for his novels, Prisoner B3087, Samurai Shortstop, and his newest book, Refugee. And I love kids' books because they're so plot-oriented, they're action-packed, um, they're thoughtful at the same time. Kids are starting to think about the world at large, but they also want really compelling stories. So I, that, that really fit the kind of stories I wanted to write, 
and that became my focus and I sold my very first book as a kid's book and I haven't looked back ever since. Throughout the day at Noble Middle School, students were given the opportunity to hear from the writer and learn all about where he gets his ideas and how he writes his novels. To prepare for his visit to Wilmington, students familiarize themselves with Gratz and his work. During a question and answer session, students ask many intriguing questions about his books, research, and the writing process. As Gratz talked with students, he told them about his books and had them participate in creative choices and how he presented the information. His goal was to inspire every student to read and realize that reading can be fun. And what I tell kids is, if you don't like to read, th that means you just haven't found the right book yet. And I'm hoping to show them that, that my books are right for some people and that for other people it might be somebody else's books and that they're, if you love horses, there's books for you. If you love like skateboarding, there's books for you. If you love mysteries or historical fiction, whatever it is, there's a book for you out there. And that's one of the things I try to, to encourage them to do is just get excited about reading, get, become readers if they aren't or solidify them as readers if they are, and that reading is fun that reading is for pleasure. You're gonna learn some stuff, and there's meaning in all of my books, but the first and foremost thing I want people to do is, I, I, want, I want to write a book that they can't put down. During his time at Noble, Gratz also ate lunch with Battle of the Books teams. The students were thrilled to get to meet the author of the book they had been reading and seemed even more excited to read in the future. The day ended with a book signing for the students. Everyone had a chance to have their favorite Gratz book personally autographed. Overall, the visit was extremely successful and entertaining for the middle school students. It is an experience like this that remind Gratz why he wanted to write children's novels to begin with. The noble students were inspired to find a book they liked to read and to read it. Many were also inspired to try their hand at writing. Reporting for Your School News, this is Mary Hall. Ogden Elementary recently held their annual Family Science Night in celebration of all the wonders that the subject of science has to offer. The event was able to excite the students as well as the parents. There are multiple different science experiments for each of the students to work through, as well as a learning station for every grade level. Each learning station worked with the subjects that kids were currently learning in their classes at school. Many of the games and experiments were based on forces in motion, the scientific method, balance of motion, engineering, and earth science. The, ev the event was complete with snacks, games, experiments, and even a photo booth. Um, we started this about a year or two ago to get the kids and families really excited about science and the hands-on. Um, just experiments and, and getting kids kind of open and, and excited about it and wanting to learn more at school. Kind of like the little taste uh, before they came back into school and, and um, dive into the standards that they're doing in the classroom. This event alternates each time it's held between science and math night to keep the students engaged on the important STEM subjects. The school works with multiple sponsors each year including UNCW, Fort Fisher Aquarium, GE, and the Arboretum to help add an extra outside to the classroom experience. Ogden hopes that learning the basics of how certain devices work will help students develop ideas of their own and invent new technology. In addition, the knowledge of how to use telescopes, microscopes, and other devices in a laboratory can help them in examining objects and determining differences between them. Ogden Elementary hosts an amazing night where students and parents were able to have a great time while learning about a great amount of the children's school subjects. Everything was informational as well as fun and each of the students left with a smile on their face and a new enthusiasm for science. For students living with a heart condition, having an automated external defibrillator or AED at school can make all the difference. That is why two dedicated students at Williston Middle School wrote letters to the CPR by MD Foundation and are being awarded an automated external defibrillator for their school. One of the student's brothers has heart problems and she worried that something would happen to him while he was at school. And prior to the donation, the only AED at Mil Wilson was located in the front office. This prompted, prompted the students to write letters to voice her concerns about the safety of students living with heart conditions. An AED is a portable device that checks the heart rhythm and can send an electric shock to the heart to try to restore normal rhythm. Cardiac arrest can strike a person of any age or fitness level which makes AEDs that much more important. Willison is thankful for the Patel family donated an AED machine by, on behalf of the CPR by MD Foundation. The new machine will be placed at a convenient location in the school. New Hanover County Schools congratulates Sanya Shaw, a senior from Hoggard High School, for being awarded the prestigious Moorhead Kane Scholarship to attend the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. The Moorhead Kane is a four-year merit scholarship which includes full tuition, student fees, housing, meals, books, a laptop, 
miscellaneous supplies, and discovery funds to be used for education opportunities. Ms. Shaw currently serves as the Hoggard Student Council Vice President, a role that involves coordinating local events and serving as a liaison between students and faculty. She is also a volunteer and fundraiser for Homes of Hope, an organization that has rescued and educated nearly 2,000 girls who have been orphaned, abandoned, or involved in human trafficking in India. In addition to her community service, Sanya is an award-winning singer and highly ranked in the South Korean martial arts Su Bak Do. While at Carolina, she plans to study finance and psychology. Check out these trending stories on the school system's website. NHCS recruiting volunteer proctors for upcoming spring testing cycle, Laney High School to hold 9th annual slam jam to prevent school violence, a new broadcast coordinator has been selected to head NHCS TV. And always trending is your school news on Facebook and Twitter.